This is a hardware review of the Euro Pollen Extractor. You can get yours at pollenextractor.com slash shop. Check them out on facebook.com slash pollenextractor. For questions, you can email service at pollenextractor.com. What's going on, everyone? Doing a new hardware review. This is going to be a little more uh, in-depth than the last unboxing. What do I got here? I've got the Euro Pollen Extractor, the Easy Separator. Picked this up from a company in France called Euro Pollen Extractor. Uh, what it is, is it's a, a dry sifting barrel. Usually the ones that you get out in the, out in the big world are several hundred dollars. Um, large, meant for fairly large scale operations. This is not. This is a very manageable price. This was 149 bucks shipping, tax and everything included coming to Canada from France. Can't beat the price point. At least not anywhere that I've been able to find for shipping to Canada. Just can't beat the price point. Fantastic. Build quality. Just on the outside. Pretty standard sort of Tupperware box. Tupperware container, plastic container. Nothing particularly special about the container. A couple of little side clip lid, lid, lid side clips here. Hold things down while the unit's in operation. And of course comes with a power adapter that fits over here. I'll get into that in a moment. Lid comes off, no problem. Got the barrel in here, as I've already used it. Uh, best practice, best practice advice number one. When operating a pollen tumbler like this, put a piece of parchment paper in the bottom of it coming up the edges so that uh, your keef or sift coming out of here makes it a lot easier to collect. So you got over here, what you've got is a little tiny, little tiny motor inside here. And I mean little tiny motor inside here with a little tiny wheel with a rubber wheel on it. That little rubber wheel down here runs right along the edge of the barrel here. And that's what catches the barrel and turns it. So barrel. I'm going to come over here one sec. When you put the barrel on, uh, only one end of it comes off. And uh, I've run it back and forth and back and forth and it really doesn't seem to matter whether you run the barrel on the motor side or not. I thought it might be a better idea to run it on the non-motor side um, just because the motor's got the wheel there and uh, maybe something could come loose. But it's a pretty tight pressure fit on here so I don't think it matters which side you run it on very simple to put the barrel in inside the the motor side here there's a little square or a little rectangular cutout you just gently gently put it in there and you'll feel a little spot where it'll sit and then you slide the other piece down the open groove on the other side that's all there is to it so when you're loading the barrel with dry, dry, dry material, don't use wet trim. Don't use anything that's been fresh frozen. Uh, it has to be dry material. Hang dried, dry trimmed, uh, and then you can freeze it when you use the product in this. Don't leave it in your freezer dry though, because it will develop moisture crystals. And as, and as you operate, the moisture will melt. Or the, the ice crystals will melt and muck up the works. You don't want to do that. So when you're operating this, um, you don't want to put more than half the volume of the barrel of, of loose dry material in. Now that, so that doesn't mean go and start packing bud in until you get up to halfway and then pack it flat at halfway. No. Uh, toss in the bud so that it's loose uh, and fills the volume of the barrel halfway this way and it's loose you want to be able to run the barrel nice and slowly so that as the barrel turns the bud will come up here up the side and fall on itself and fall and rotate and fall and rotate and fall inside that agitation will cause the trichomes to knock off so once you've got it all in and operating or in and set up your buds in here <coughs> oh 
We'll get to more of the process in a little bit. You got the lid on. You got the little snaps on. Just because it's easier to show this here. I'm going to skip to like step five just to show you the electrical operation. And then I'll go back in a little bit and I'll show you step like three and four, which involves working with this in the freezer. So you plug in your power here. You can see this over here on this side. Yeah. Plug in the power. Standard North American. When you order this from their site, you have multiple options for plug type. So if you're ordering in North America, make sure you pick the right plug type. Same with the EU or Britain or Australia, wherever, wherever other places that are listed. Make sure you're ordering your correct plug type. So, let's plug it in. Now, pollen tumblers are meant to operate and tumble fairly slowly. This one has multiple speeds, and I'll throw it on right now. Now, I have the, I have the motor on, but basically at its lowest possible setting before turning it off again. And as you can see, it doesn't even turn the motor there. So if I slowly start to turn the dial, oh, I'm going the wrong way. You can see that I can slowly, slowly, slowly turn the dial and make the motor turn very, very slowly. And what it wants to do is it wants to oscillate like this and then stop. So it wants to spin the buds for a little bit and then stop and let the buds settle. So you want to be doing this very slowly. No faster than this and you'll get optimum excellent uh, key, free, key uh, return off of it. You don't want to run it fast though because that will cause all of the buds to be just like inside of laundry inside of a dryer and if the barrel is spinning really really fast the buds will stick to the outside of the barrel and they won't there won't be any agitation or knocking around inside there so none of the key will fall off. If you make bubble hash it's the same kind of idea the barrel agitates like that so that there's everything bashing against each other inside rather than just spinning like that where everything would just get stuck to the outside. So a slow operation like that. And then I found that right at the very end I give it a quick spin and then turn it off. And that knocks any excess that's been stuck on there to the barrel, just gives it a quick put and knocks it all off. And then I then take it out, come back over here, and I will show you uh, the rest of the process. Is some previously tumbled product. I've already done a single tumble on all of this. I'm going to retumble it again. Lesson number one that I learned yesterday, or when I did my first experiments with this, once you have your tumbling bin set up, and you have paper paper in the bottom of it and all of that stuff, don't um, don't try to manipulate raw weed or open weed over here because you will get bits and pieces of it in here. Let's do that over your sink or over another tray or over somewhere else. So I'm going to put this uh, frozen product in the barrel right now. And I do recommend having something like a cup or something like that so that you can put the barrel on the cup and uh, yeah, you just put the barrel on the on a cup so that your the barrel spindle is down into the cup and uh, you don't wind up knocking it over or damaging the spindle or something while you're doing this put your product in Filling no more than half the barrel. That's enough for this run. Put the rest of your product back in the freezer if you've got excess. Don't let it thaw. Don't let it develop any moisture. Put the lid on your barrel. Now it's safe to come back over, over here. So you put your barrel back in, put the motor side in first, find the little groove that it wants to go into, and in it goes. And then put the little lid back on, 
Put your clips in to hold the lid on nice and firm for you. And now, yes, I'm actually going to operate this in the fridge. So I'm going to go and put it in my standard. I'll give you a look for real quick before I move it over there and show you. I'm going to put it in my standard upright fridge freezer. All right. We are in the freezer, as you can see. And I will just turn it on and begin the sift. Just going like that, letting it stop. It's not a constant motion. And I will close the door and I will set my timer here for 10 minutes. Three, two, one. All right, we are done. And we give it, I like, I've found, a quick, quicker turn, and then turn it off, unplug, and back to the workstation. Voila, this is a 10 minute extraction, 10 minute pollen extraction. On dry frozen butts. Cup over here. Carefully take this out. Try not to knock it around just in case there's any loose flour still on it. Now, don't need the cup, sorry. Just put that off to the side. Now you can see in here, got a little bit of green gold in there. Now the reason that this particular product is a little on the green side is I have already run this yesterday, the first time that I ran it, and I extracted all of this off this material already. Lots and lots and lots of it. This I ran just a second run today, just for the demonstration purposes of how the machine works, my best practices for how, it, how to get it all to come together. Put that back. And then I will collect this. <clears throat> now the machine comes with one of these little uh, plastic uh, collection cards. Very simple, very easy. Start just up the edge and scrape down. Collect towards the middle. Gently slide it under the wheel and scrape towards the center. Always come towards the middle. One 10 minute tumble of twice tumbled weed has already gotten me a nice little bit of keef. And that is how the pollen tumbler works. Lift it up the side on your paper. So, what's my overall take on this device? Gotta say, from the basement gardener to big time thumbs up, I absolutely love it. From the standpoint of price point, it just beats the snot out of everything else out there by hundreds of dollars. For my home uses, I don't need a product that does pounds at a time. This product will do up to around a half an ounce at a time and gets me keef upon piles of keef. I absolutely love it. It's easy to use, it's well filled. It's small, compact. It showed up fast from France. Really, I really can't be, uh, I really got nothing to complain about. This was worth every penny. Canadian dollars, shipping, tax, everything to my door. This sounds scripted because it is. I tried to record something decent and off the cuff for about an hour, and I just kept fucking it up. So I had to make some notes. Sorry, Sue. 
This product review was neither solicited nor sponsored by Europollen Extractor. After I posted my original unboxing video, I dropped a note to Europollen Extractor letting them know of my video and uh, gave them a link to the YouTube address if they felt like checking it out. <coughs> a couple days later, they emailed me thanking me for my YouTube review and let me know that they were working on an updated model and would like to send me one to get my opinion when the, their updates were ready. I said, fantastic, that'd be awesome, let's do it. So uh, now I'm looking forward to the next generation's updates and getting to put a new video for that together and letting you guys know all about it. No doubt, Euro Pollen Extractor is going to make a good thing even better. So with that, uh, peace out, keep calm, and toke on. Ciao for now.